Now I want to note here that some of the translations give the impression that the prayer is either separate or it is related to the verb truly interpret, as though someone were going to speak with tongues and then stop and pray separately and say, Oh God, give me the interpretation. That is not what Paul is saying here in these verses. We've already read in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians that the group, the one group, is whereby the contribution comes from the Spirit within. First comes the uttering forth with tongues, and then comes the interpretation of tongues to the same holy person. And we'll see that even more so as we continue here in this chapter. We should continue walking in God's love. That's our motivation as to why we will want to speak in tongues with the interpretation of those tongues when we're assembled together. There's no doubt but that the Holy Spirit life within us, within any holy person, is fully capable of giving you, or whoever may speak with tongues, at a church assembly, at a church meeting, give them the interpretation of those tongues. All of us should seek after so that we can exceed, be abundant, seek after to edify the church, all of us. Not to be self-centered, but for the edification of all of us. All holy people have received holy spirit life. We have that gift within us. And therefore, there's no excuse for any of us not to give the interpretation of the tongues if we should speak with tongues out loud at church assembly. It is against God's will for any holy person during a church meeting to utter forth with a tongue without giving the interpretation of that tongue immediately following. Continuing in chapter 14, Paul again gives himself as the example and he says, if it should ever happen that I would pray with a tongue, again he uses that word pray referring to uttering forth or speaking with tongues. So if I would pray with a tongue, if I would communicate to and with God and speak forth the words that are given to me, a contribution from the Spirit within me, if I would pray with a tongue, it is definitely my Holy Spirit life that is praying. But during that kind of speaking, that kind of uttering forth of prayer, my mind, my fleshy mindset is fruitless. It is without fruit, unfruitful. It lacks produce. Why? Because I don't know what I am saying. <laughs> I don't understand the meaning of the words that I am willingly uttering forth with a tongue. And logically following on from this, what does all of this mean? What is it that I do? And Paul answers, he says, I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray words of a tongue which the Spirit gives to me. I will speak with tongues. But I will also pray with the mind. I will speak the words in my known language, words that I understand in my mind, and that's referring to the interpretation of those tongues. I will sam with the Spirit, the words that the Spirit gives me, and I will also Sam with the mind. I will Sam the words that I understand a known language to me, referring again to the interpretation of those tongues which he would Sam. And that word Sam is from the Greek word that refers to um, a song or as though singing, speaking in different tones while accompanied by a stringed instrument. And during this time when Paul is writing, many people would sam in tongue at a church meeting. They would use their voice as though singing or samming while accompanied by someone playing a stringed instrument in commemoration for mercies received from God. 
that's because God withholds merited judgment or punishment on people. But God would show mercy. He would withhold that merited judgment or punishment. Now to sing with a psalm, of course, is not the kind of singing that you may hear many times today, where the voice ranges from one extreme to the other, or there's drums being played at the same time, drowning out the voice. And it's so loud that it can be very distracting at church assemblies, church meetings. The psalm that Paul is referring to is likened unto the psalms of David. And you could look at those which are recorded in the book of Psalms. Since the day of Pentecost, when we have received the gift of Holy Spirit, it is available for all holy people to psalm or to sing with tongues. You know, not just to speak in one tone or one monotone, as it were, but we can sing or psalm with tongues. We can also sing or psalm the interpretation of those tongues, as Paul has detailed in chapters 12, 13, and 14. Now, Paul continues on an individual basis as though speaking to the individual holy people in Corinth. He said, Since it should happen at any time, or if it would happen that you would bless with spirit, you would speak those good words, or those words that are well. That's what the word bless means. It means good words, well words. So if it should happen that you would bless with spirit, you would speak those good words coming from the spirit within you, how will the person filling up or occupying the place of the unlearned person, someone who's in a location at your church meeting but is not learned? They have not been informed intellectually. They have not learned regarding speaking with tongues or uttering forth with tongues yet. How will that unlearned person say with certainty or yes, Surely, amen. How will the person say with certainty, based on your thankfulness, you're being grateful to God, since emphatically he, that unlearned person, did not know, he absolutely does not perceive in his mind what you say. He does not know what you just spoke with tongues. He does not know the words that you uttered forth in a tongue. And as Paul writes here, as you bless with a tongue. He doesn't know or understand those good words that you have just spoken with a tongue. So how could he say amen at your being thankful when you say and express to God, thank you for allowing me to speak with tongues? How can an unlearned person say Amen, or with certainty, agreeing with you. When he does not know what you're saying, he does not understand the words you just spoke. In truth, indeed, emphatically, yes, you are being thankful. Yes, it's great that you have gratitude to God, that you yourself are thankful. It is beautiful, in fact, that you are being thankful to God for being able to speak with tongues. However, Contrary to beauty, Paul writes, the different person or that other person, that unlearned person, is not being edified. That other person who heard you speak with tongues is not edified. They didn't understand a word you said when you were speaking or blessing in tongues. Though they were good words, but he didn't understand the words you just spoke. He's not being built up. That is not walking in God's kind of love. You see, even though the other person heard you speak with a tongue, he did not know or understand with his fleshy mind what you said. He does not know what you said. You should have also spoken the interpretation of those tongues. And that way, that unlearned person would have understood those words and been given the opportunity to understand and thus receive the edification from those words which you would understand. 
In this context, the unlearned person hears someone else speaking in the church with a tongue without giving the interpretation of that tongue. And so he cannot honestly say amen or say with certainty, surely, based on the speaker's thankfulness for speaking with tongues, because he had no understanding of the words being spoken. And truthfully, the speaker doesn't either, because remember we read that the speaker does not understand the words that he speaks in a tongue. You see, the speaker cannot be thankful for the information contained in the tongue. Why? Because he doesn't understand it either. What he is thankful about is for the ability, that God-given ability via the spirit within him for receiving that contribution and being able to speak it forth. Yes, it's beautiful to be thankful for being able to speak with tongues. No doubt about that. In a church meeting, though, a holy person who utters forth with a tongue should follow it by interpretation of those tongues.